There is another example which relates to how the judiciary is unjustifiably painted as the villain for the actions or inactions of another body in the justice system. In particular, in the recent past, including last year, the public prosecutor made the decision to withdraw criminal charges against certain high-profile individuals. These decisions were not particularly received well by the public, but a large part of the blame was put on the judiciary for making the only available consequential orders upon the withdrawal of such, such charges. Under Article 145, Clause 3 of the Federal Constitution, the Attorney General, who is also the public prosecutor, has the discretion to institute, conduct, or discontinue any proceeding for an offense other than before a Sharia court. When the public prosecutor decides to withdraw charges, the courts only have one of two very limited consequential options. Depending on the facts, these two options are either granting an order of discharge not amounting to acquittal, popularly called DNAA, or a discharge amounting to an acquittal, which can be called a DAA. The courts cannot turn around and insist to the public prosecutor that a charge remain. Each of them, the judiciary and the public prosecutor, have their own constitutionally demarcated constitutional functions and both must be adjudged fairly for the exercise of their powers to the exclusion of the other. And yet, when a charge is withdrawn, the judge making the only available consequential orders is painted as corrupt, sometimes as incompetent, or sometimes both. What the public fails to understand is that the person responsible for that decision is the public prosecutor and not the courts. It is often the courts that are chastised for such decisions, and this erodes public confidence in the judicial system. Having stated these examples, we must ask, how can we ensure the continued protection and integrity of the justice system and preserve public confidence in our judicial institution? Beginning with internal judicial independence, it is my view that a judge must continue to hear cases without fear or favor and without any motivations, hope of reward, or any bias. In particular, I would like to remind myself, as well as my sister and brother judges, about the crucial significance of stare decisis or the doctrine of judicial precedent. Courts lower in the judicial hierarchy must remember to abide by precedents set by higher courts. The federal court, being the apex court, must continue to remember that it cannot depart too easily from precedent, especially so if a previously decided authority is questioned not so long after it was decided. The federal court cannot afford to be inconsistent as that interferes with the public who organizes their affairs upon legal clarity and certainty.